Are you working a 9 to 5 office job from home? Then me and you have a lot in common and today I wanted to share what working from home actually looks like. These days I find it impossible to get out of bed. I feel glued to the pull of 5 more minutes like a bajillion times and no matter how hard I try, I can never get out of bed at 5am or 6am like every other YouTube video seems to show. I try my best to read the Bible from my phone app right in bed as soon as I wake up before hitting my other apps or emails even. Sometimes I forget and it's not perfect, but holding myself accountable to being consistent in reading before I even step foot out of my bed has really helped me feel closer to God. I find that as soon as I step into the real world, I'm in a huge rush for the next thing off of my to-do list and then eating, walking, coffee running, whatever it may be. And then God falls off the tracks when he should be number one, of course. I'm constantly learning and growing and find that when I just sit still and genuinely talk to him, it's an unexplainable feeling of his presence that's a safe haven. It's not about how long you spend, it's about the value you get out of the time you do spend. Something I'm really learning. Even 10 to 15 minutes can change the course of how the rest of your day unfolds. The best part about working from home is that when you're feeling extra groggy or the weather is rainy or dark, you can stay in your pajama bottoms and wear cozy fluffy sherpas and you're basically set. Some days, like this video, I feel like dressing up. Basically, it's whatever I'm in the mood for. Usually, I live in these ripped American Eagle jeans which are the comfiest things I'd ever worn. I actually even went running with them once on a side note. Yeah, running. That's how stretchy they are. <laughs> and super flattering. I also don't put on makeup every day, but maybe half the days of the week I usually will. Like I mentioned in my other working in the office video, it really helps me feel better and more polished and ready. And what I've also realized is that anything you do before starting work, when you work from home especially, is really important. It takes place of your commute, which ultimately prepares you to get into work mode mentally. If you're crawling straight from bed to the desk and then back, there's no quick switch in your mind, so it will take me a while to adjust to be productive. Things like dressing cute, putting makeup on, driving to Starbucks like you'll see in a minute, or just any routine before work sets me up for the day mentally. Hi friends, so today I wanted to do a little behind the scenes of a day in my life kind of being productive. I um, just wanted to show you what I'm up to during the day. It's nothing fancy, very normal, mundane things, but today I just wanted to do like a little normal, realistic day in the life. I work from home, so it is such a blessing to be able to wake up in the morning and just not commute like four hours like I used to. And so yeah, I really hope that you enjoy and let's get on with it. There's no other way to start the day than with some good coffee. Um, so coffee number one of the day. I love feeling like I'm going somewhere, like I have somewhere to belong, you know, like instead of a commute now, my commute is to Starbucks. And so yeah, let's go. latte um here it is in all its glory it's a grande shake and espresso and i get it with three pumps of vanilla extra milk and um sometimes i'll get it with brown sugar if the store has the store has been running out for like a month now anyways if you're an iced vanilla latte lover or just an iced latte lover in general you should definitely try out the grande ice shake and espresso because it's so much cheaper you get extra espresso and you get like your syrup in the cost so definitely a big fan that first sip just touches my soul in every sort of way. Also, it's really strong because it has like extra espresso and I love it. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. 
So this is a time where after making some breakfast, I'd open up my laptop and just get straight to it. Usually, I like to start work at 9am, and I'm still figuring out a perfect rhythm with that. I'm really lucky with my work, where you can basically work whatever hours are best for you as long as all your work is still done on time, so the days where I wake up sick or want to sleep in until 10am, I can. Most days, I've been working from 7 or 8am because I find that the later I start, there's always work that needs to be finished and it just never feels feels done and just constantly piling up. But if I start earlier, I can almost feel like I'm on top of it. So that really helps me with feeling more accomplished, prepared, and just a little less stressed. My little desk situation here, as you can see, is just a laptop and monitor with an extra keyboard and it's honestly so comfortable. I love it. It just makes me so happy. At my previous internship, I would sometimes work in bed, but rolling on to my second month now at this job, I don't think I've worked from my bed at all and just stuck to my desk and even just having a set place where I know I need to be productive helps me focus. Now let's talk a little bit about feeling a bit off these days. I know that a lot of us must be feeling that pandemic fatigue or restlessness for the things that make us feel more alive. I'm not sure if it's still the ominous shadow of the pandemic life of isolation that might be the result of your lack of motivation to basically do anything, but it might have something to do with it. Mine comes in waves. My goal for the longest time ever has been to learn how to wake up early for years, and I guess I thought it'd come naturally as soon as I started my full-time job. Newsflash, it didn't. If no one is pushing you or forcing you, it's hard to self-discipline. I think that's one of the hardest things about being an adult and finding your independence is you've had structure your entire life, and now you're supposed to just figure it out. Full of black holes and no instructions. So I guess I'm still in that in-between stage, which I think describes my channel perfectly. I'm not really an expert when I'm sharing tips or anything like that. I'm just a regular schmegular human being who struggles. So if you're watching this channel at any time, me and you are just figuring things out together. I strive to aim high and never give up no matter what, but also acknowledge the uncertainty of it all. I'm still working up to most of my goals and some days it feels like limbo and that's okay. A lot of your 20s feel like this weird pull between what you're supposed to be doing and the many potential universes where you could be a whole different person with different interests, goals, even jobs. That's something that has always left me wondering before big life choices. Who will I be if I go this way? Will my life change 360 degrees if I go left? Will I meet new people and become a whole different version of myself if I go right? This constant what if of my potential would constantly freeze me in my tracks. Honestly, as you grow and learn, you realize it's really not that deep. You're the author, writer, and main character of your story. You have the power, and with God's guidance, who is the ultimate author and writer of your story, you have nothing to fear. Because he'll always keep you safe and show you the path you're meant to be in. It just might take a little time. Speaking of time, are you taking breaks in your work from home life? That's so crucial. Even like 10 minute breaks of just mindless scrolling, I'm always scribbling away my thoughts on Instagram, so if you're interested in that, follow me there at Lattes Darling. And yep, another break where I stare out into the void and reevaluate my entire life. And this right here is my very professional way of announcing do not disturb mode for meetings. We have quite a lot of them, usually more on Mondays and Fridays to start and end the week with action goals and results, but also sprinkled throughout the week to have touch points with team members. I find those things so important, especially since being onboarded remotely, you tend to feel more connected and understood even in a 10 minute video call than a million back and forths. Especially because you've never actually met anyone in real life. It's one of those reasons where I love that we're always required to have our video on because even if some days you don't feel like it or you don't look like it, you still get to feel that sense of being united. My whole life is basically virtual at this point. So crazy. This is me being real with you about my coffee consumption. Usually I'll clear it all at the end of the day, but like you saw here, you know, sometimes you get tired and you just can't see straight, so if your brain is fried, you just become a collector. But back to the deep life work thoughts and rants. Um, it's your duty, I guess, to mold the two together between work-life balance 
and forcing yourself to do the things that you really don't want to do. And in your favor, of course, and those can just be things like I mentioned before, waking up early. But also, people have this misconception that once you're thriving or doing what you love, it's an easy road. But in fact, it's actually quite the opposite. That was always one of my biggest goals growing up and continues to be to do work that excites you, challenges you, and makes you proud. Coffee, 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 number two of the day, but who's counting? Today, I wanted to tell you about a coffee company with a mission, Grace Coffee. If you know Gabe and Jess Conte from YouTube here, it's a company founded by Gabe and his brother, partners with the organization Compassion, which is a nonprofit organization that helps support children from poverty. 10% of your coffee subscription purchase of bagged coffee or K-cups is sent to children in poverty who need food, clothing, and an education. You'll get to see the specific child you're supporting and even write messages to them to stay connected. It's not often you come across a coffee company that has such an impactful mission. Personally, the first for me. If you're a coffee lover who loves to help when you can, this would be the perfect way to help save a child and support this cause. Premium organic coffee plus a giving and grateful heart equals positive change. You literally choose your flavor, delivery schedule, and it arrives straight to your door. They have lots of cute mugs as well, the same one that I was using in the beginning of the video. If I ever wanted to create a coffee company, honestly, this is exactly what it would look like. With such a great purpose and mission in mind, if you're interested, use code LATTESDARLING for 15% off of your purchase. I'm an affiliate for Grace Coffee because their mission really means a lot to me. You know that while brewing and sipping on your magic bean water, you're making a difference in a child's life today, which is absolutely incredible. I use the Colombian dark roast because I think dark roast tastes the best when you make it iced, since I'm such an iced coffee addict. You just add a little vanilla syrup, frothy milk, and it just tastes very light, fresh, and flavorful. And now, back to work. Most of this video is literally just me hanging out with my coffee. Hope you don't feel like a third wheel or anything. But honestly, having these tiny breaks where your mind doesn't have to think or focus, but can just go through the motions of the coffee brewing routine is just such a peaceful process. When you're not rushing, of course. Sometimes I'll be brewing coffee and running around the kitchen, cleaning the French press and all the grounds five minutes before a meeting, or scarfing down an entire plate of pasta two minutes before a meeting. What can you do? It happens. Not always glamorous, really crazy and busy, but it helps when you're constantly working on new things and constantly learning. But I have to say I'm pretty focused these days just because there really isn't any time not to be. There's always lots to do and one day I can feel like everything is under control and the next I'm back to not even being sure where to start, what to conquer first. But you know, you just take a deep breath, take it one step at a time, one task at a time, one day at a time. So I was filming this the day Fearless came out, Taylor's version, of course. So you best believe I had her album on repeat all day. And let me tell you the roller coaster of emotions I felt tearing up at all the nostalgic songs my 10 year old self lived through in the initial Fearless release days. I still remember talking to my friend in grade six about our mutual love for the songs. It's unbelievable. And her vault songs, no words. Will there ever be a vlog where I don't talk about Taylor Swift? highly unlikely. And that's kind of it for today's video. If you're interested in more of the actual marketing work and tasks that I do on the daily, leave me a like and comment and I'll make a vlog really marketing focused on the job where I can share what I'm actually working on as a marketer, the type of projects and daily things I'm on about. I was always interested about that and I love watching that on YouTube. So yeah, let me know. But also there's a part two of today's vlog, a continuation of what I'm up to after the clock strikes 5 p.m. in my nine to five. So check that out also if you're interested and don't forget to follow me on Instagram at LattesDarling and subscribe to this channel if you love work from home, marketing, self-reflection, self-love, 
introversion, viable, or simply boring realistic everyday vlog content. See you soon! Bye.